Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're gonna talk about time periods. I'm not talking about today or same period last year. I'm talking about like yesterday or maybe last month. How do you do that? Do you create a measure for each one? What if you have 10 measures? Do you create 20 measures or what do you do, All right? So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Stay tuned. If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the great videos from both Adam and myself. Okay, so time periods. You can have a yesterday, you wanna look at the last seven days, you wanna look at last month or last two months. How do you calculate that? How do you deal with that in your model? So there's lots of different ways. You can use a relative date slicer, possibly, right? You can do, you can write measures to accommodate it. There's, it's probably so flexible that it provides you with lots of options. In this video, I had a specific question about yesterday and last month. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of how you can solve this, all right? So instead of all this talking, you guys know what I like to do, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So what you would do is go to your calendar table. And what I like to do when we're talking about, you know, last seven days or last one day or yesterday or something like that, I like to just create a new column. And in the new column, the first thing I do is I create this thing called days, days from today, days equals. And then I'll write something like this. I'll use date diff and then I'll say, you know, start with calendar, the calendar date and then go from today, right? And then oh, comma, and then day, right? Just like that. So there's my days from. And so we'll click check to make sure I didn't mess up anything. And then we'll add a calculated column to our model. And then you'll go over and you'll see, if we click on our table, okay, I'm gonna put that in there. there we go. You'll see days from, right? If I sort this, if we sort this, descending, you'll see, you know, that's today, that's yesterday, and on and so forth. Patrick, you told us if we need to add a calculated column, don't start in DAX, start in the source, do it in Power Query. Absolutely, absolutely. You can absolutely, if you can, do it in the source. If you don't have access to the source, do it in Power Query. If you have, if you don't, do it in DAX. Do it in DAX because it's just easy. And if you guys get a copy of this file, it's easier to work in DAX than in Power Query. Okay, so I do this and then how do I do yesterday? So now I've added one column, now I gotta add another column, all right? So I'm gonna add this new column. And you can do this all in a single column, but you'll see why I'm doing it in two columns in a bit, all right? So then I can say yesterday equals in a simple if. If, all right, uh, calendar days from today equals one, then it's yesterday. Right. Otherwise, it's not just like that. I've just built this little filter and then all I need to do is go back to my report and drag this over. I can add it filters on page. I can make it a slicer. It'll behave the exact same way. I'm going to drop it on filters on page. And then if we choose yes, it's only going to select the data from yesterday. Right. August 27th and everything's filtered down. Just works. It's just that simple. But now they say, Patrick, okay, okay, all right, I see you, I see you. They say, Patrick, what about the last seven days? Well, ah, that's easy, that's easy. Give me a more of a challenge. They say, okay, what if I want to see last month? I was like, ah, that's a good one, that's a good one, right? So let me show you how to do last month. Right click on the calendar again, choose new column, and then I already wrote the code. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paste this in, come on, new column and paste this right here. And you can see all I'm doing is seeing if, right, the date diff between uh, today and the day is equal to one month ago, right? If it's yes, no, right? And so then I'll get rid of this. Let me make sure I check this. And then I'll get rid of this slicer, this one, and then watch this. I'm gonna bring over uh, last month onto filters for this page. And then I'm gonna choose yes. And then watch what happens to this line graph, right? It's all of last month. So this month that I'm recording, the month that I'm recording this video is August. And so last month is July and everything just sums up. I know what you're thinking now, Patrick, wait a minute. <sighs> wait a minute. So I have to do, create a column for each one. Yeah, you gotta create a column for each one. But that's not the end of this, right? I'm not lazy, I'm just efficient. I'm not gonna take you through all those steps to create multiple columns, multiple columns, multiple columns. 
Let's get rid of that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right. So let me show you a more efficient way. My buddy Phil C. Mark wrote a great blog post on this pattern using time periods to do this. And it's really effective when you have lots and lots of data, but you can use it for small data sets. And you can also think about calculation groups and things like that. Um, but sometimes you just want to use a filter. All right. And if you go read, I forget what the name of Phil's uh, blog post is, but I'll post a link in the comments below so you guys can take a look at it. Um, and it's a great blog post and it goes in depth. I'm just going to introduce you to the pattern. And if you want more information about it, go check out Phil's blog post. All right. So check this out. So I'm going to delete this. And what I'm going to do is we can leave these here for now. What I'm going to do is something kind of interesting. I'm going to go home and I'm going to choose. Um, I mean, I'm gonna click modeling and then choose new table. And I've already kind of start writing this up, okay? Cause I don't want you guys to watch me tic-tac, tic-tac with DAX too much, but check this out. Let me show you. So you start with this little sample code right here, little sample code. And in my sample code, what I'm doing is you, you need to choose a value. That's like the maximum date of your value. And anytime you refresh your report, it'll keep going, you know, keep, keep representing the maximum date in your value. And then you kind of break it down by year, month, day. These are just some, some uh, pieces, parts of the date that you can use to make it easier to generate this table, All right? Uh, so we're gonna do return, do this. This is a little constructor, just so we can see the values that's ret being returned as a table, right? So I'm gonna turn this off. Let's do this, right? So now, if we do that, what you'll see is if we go into the data view and we click on that table, let's find that table. So it's gonna create a table for us called time periods. You'll see the single day, right? It's a single day. If I change this to this month or this year, whatever, right? It's gonna show, come on, come on, eight this month. I know what you're thinking. Again, just like the calculated column, can we do this in the source? Absolutely. In fact, on Phil's blog, he actually provides a T-SQL sample where you can do this in T-SQL. And Gilbert Q over at Formu actually has a really good blog post. And I'll provide both of them uh, links below where he shows you how to do it in Power Query. So if you can push it to the source and do it in Power Query, absolutely do it. Okay. I'm just kind of partial to DAX. And again, if you get a copy of this PBIX file, you can work through it in DAX. All right. Okay. Back to my laptop. So now you can see that. Now what I want to do is I want to return a table that represents yesterday, right? A single column table that I can filter my report by. I have some code that I wrote. And so it's a really simple little piece of code here. And all I'm doing is like, say, hang on, if I got rid of my return, that's all right. There we go. Right. So I return and I'm generating a selected uh, generating the table and you see I'm doing this series. It's just one row yesterday. Right. And then I'm returning the values. So here we go. So if we do that, give it a second and you'll see. Right. Yesterday is the name of the time period. My, the value I'm returning is the date. Right. And then I'm just returning uh, the axis. All right. So simple. So easy. You can continue to add other time periods to this. And that's actually what they both Phil and Gilbert talk about in their blog posts. And so I have a, a complete sample that I'm gonna paste in and show you what I'm talking about. So if we do this, you'll see that I'm satisf satisfying the, both of the, the requirements for the report yesterday and last month. And you'll see right here, I'm generating the series and I'm using a little DAX to calculate last month. And I'm using a little DAX to calculate today. And so we had this conversation about, it was like, well, what do you mean last month? Are you talking about not August, all of July? Or are you talking about the last 30 days, right? That's two different things. And so you can actually use the yesterday snip codes, code block to do last 30 days. You would just change it, right? 30 and nothing from, you know, your subtraction, just change the math. But in our case, in the case of the requirements for the solution we were solving, they wanted the last month. So if I'm in August, only show me July. If I'm in July, only show me June. And they wanted to also filter by yesterday. All right. So you do this and we click the checkbox and the code is the table is created and you'll see there's yesterday because today is august 28 and then this is last month because i'm in the month of august as the dates increment in when whatever date you're using as the base date 
in the code, so will the values of this. It'll dynamically do it. It'll dynamically do it with the column approach too. And that's the reason I like this. You don't have to change anything. It just automatically handles it. So then you need to make one slight change to the model. So you can go here and that new table that's there, right? You got your new time periods table, relate it to the calendar table or your date table. So that date that's there, relate it to your date table. And we're gonna break a rule that Marco and the world says, right? This is one scenario where you definitely wanna use bi-directional filtering because it can go back and forth. And in some cases, you'll have a many to uh, one-to-many relationship between this table and that one. And so in our case, it's just a one-to-one, -one, um, but that relation, Power BI automatically pick it up. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, and so now we switch back and what we can do is we can use that period. Okay, let me drag it to our report canvas, make a slicer out of this. Watch how cool this is. Make a slicer out of this. And if I choose yesterday, watch, if I choose yesterday, it only filters down to yesterday. If I choose last month, it filters the data down only to the data last month. What? Now there's lots of other things you can do with this. You can introduce calculation groups with this and have this hybrid approach with the time periods and calculation groups. You can add more time periods to this table just by writing a little DAX or doing it back in the source and Power Query, but the possibilities are limit are just boundless. And if you're working with a large data, data volume, and if you read at the end of Phil's blog post, you'll see where he does some comparison between it, between using the traditional date or doing it in a, a measure or using the time period tables is significantly faster. Faster. All right, what do you guys think? Have you used this approach? Have you ever seen this pattern before? I'd love to know. Let's con you guys know how I like to do. Let's continue the conversation where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting a guy in the cute channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.